probably heard that there's some strange ideas lurking out there in physics, particularly in relativity and quantum mechanics. And perhaps you've heard of this Heisenberg uncertainty principle. which essentially says that particles have a wave like nature. And the more you know about the particle nature, the less you know about the wave nature. And the more you know about the wave nature, the less you know about the particle nature. So if we know the location of a particle, a quantum particle, exactly, then we can know nothing about its momentum or velocity. So what Heisenberg's uncertainty principle does is it kind of puts limits on our knowledge. Inherent limits to what we can know. And if we look a little deeper at quantum mechanics, which is just the study of the very, very small, the microscopic world, the smallest world we know about, it's based on a mathematical formalism. Involving these wave functions that predict probability. So it's kind of a world of possibilities. And then when we make a measurement we say that we collapse the wave function and we get real particles. We see real particles in our experiment. So what's sort of interesting here is we've got this sort of underlying order to what is essentially reality. So in, in a sense reality is kind of a shadow world due to this underlying order. And, and notice here when we make a measurement we're becoming conscious of something. So it sort of seems that consciousness has a unique role in the universe. So maybe it's not just the result of evolution, maybe it's something inherent to our universe, like space or time. So we're led to this really critical question, which is, is consciousness just something inherent to the universe, like space and time? Or is consciousness something emergent? Is it the result of evolution? So if you're in the inherent camp, and virtually all the spiritual traditions are in the inherent camp, then you're saying consciousness is part of the universe. So animals, yeah, they're conscious. Human beings, they're conscious. But plants, grass as well, would have some form of consciousness. And even rocks on some level would have consciousness. If you're in the emergent camp, then you're basically saying, okay, we've got cells and molecules, and if we arrange those cells and if we arrange those molecules into cells and those cells into organs and we get organs like brains, then something new emerges, which we call consciousness. And this is a really critical question to answer because it changes our whole view of the universe that we live in. It changes our everyday interactions with others, with nature, etc. Something that we might ask ourselves is, what about those original pioneers of quantum mechanics? Were they on the inherent side or the emergent side? And if we go back and we look at Heisenberg, Schrodinger, Einstein, de Broglie, Planck, and Pauli, well, they wrote essays with titles such as, for Schrodinger, the eye that is God, the oneness of mind, the mystic vision. Einstein wrote of the cosmic religious feeling. De Broglie wrote, the mechanism demands a mysticism. 
Planck wrote The Mystery of Our Being, Pauli wrote Embracing the Rational and the Mystical. So what we see here is first that all these pioneers were awestruck by what they were finding. But moreover, they weren't suggesting you create your own reality or that there's a personalized God, but they were agreeing with the, with the basic notion that consciousness was inherent to the universe and that there was some sort of underlying order. And this paralleled what they were finding in quantum mechanics. Erwin Schrodinger wrote very explicitly about there being one consciousness, an inherent consciousness. Uh, he stated, there is obviously only one alternative, namely the unification of minds or consciousnesses. Their multiplicity is only apparent. In truth, there is only one mind or one consciousness. And he went on to write about how all the different religions came to this same conclusion. In this quote here, he's referring to a book called The Perennial Philosophy by Aldous Huxley. And he says, open it where you will and you will find many beautiful utterances of a similar kind, meaning referring to one consciousness. You are struck by the miraculous agreement between humans of different race, different religion, knowing nothing about each other's existence, separated by centuries and millennia, and by the greatest of distances that there are on the globe. And they all come to the same conclusion of an inherent one consciousness. I'd like to end on a simple question. How does our belief about consciousness affect how we interact in the world, our way of being? So if we believe consciousness is inherent, that means that it's like space and time, part of our universe. That would also mean that we're, in a sense, sharing consciousness, that we're all conscious beings. And that gives us a much greater sense of connection greater sense of connection to ourselves, with others, and with nature. Whereas if you see consciousness as being emergent, then of course it evolved and it's kind of a product of all the molecules and cells and organs in your body. But each of us would have a separate consciousness and so it emphasizes separateness. In the inherent view, there's an emphasis on the unknown. You'll remember we had the quantum waves and they represented an underlying order. And then consciousness kind of came along, broke down that wave function and we got reality. So that underlying order was largely unknown. So in our inherent view, we get a greater sense of mystery. We get a greater sense, I think, of sacredness, a greater appreciation for sacredness in our universe, and a uh, just a greater depth in terms of, of our view of the world and our t views of others. Whereas, I think in the emergent view, with these separate consciousness, there tends to be an emphasis on knowing things and kind of controlling things. And then of course consciousness is about awareness. So there's an emphasis on just being aware of being an observer in the inherent view. Whereas in the emergent view there tends to be a emphasis on thinking, on identity, we tend to identify with our thoughts and that becomes part of our ego. And I'm not trying to say here that we should eliminate thinking and we should eliminate the ego. Of course not. They're part of nature. They're, uh, they're like our hands, right? Our hands have evolved and they fulfill a very important purpose. The same thing with thinking and our ego. What I'm trying to say is that we want to be aware, to be conscious 
of our thinking and of our ego. That way we keep our ego in check. Right? That's how we keep our ego in check by observing it and putting it putting those thoughts into context. Since consciousness is shared, uh, we can, in a sense, put all that thinking into greater context. And so, in the end, I'm hoping through the uh, discussion of quantum physics and the pioneers of quantum physics that I can kind of influence you to head in this direction. That's all for today. Thank you very much.